From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, preserve, cherish, the only home we've ever known. The Pale Blue Dot. Good evening, my friends, and welcome to the very first episode of the MindMate podcast. I am your host for this, uh, this, this show. My name is Tom Ahern, and uh, I, I'm also on another podcast, actually, called Adventure Fit Radio, in which I strongly recommend you, uh, you go and look out for. But uh, the MindMate podcast is all about embracing uh, personal identity. It's all about owning experiences. Um, it's about getting fucking excited about being the person who you are. And it's about losing and unraveling the taboo and all the isolation that comes in the mental health journey. Because from personal experience, if, uh, if that sort of society was embraced on a global scale, uh, when I was dealing with some anxiety and OCD, I feel like it would be a little, just a little bit less, um, a little bit less harder to deal with, which, uh, and as we all know, for those either directly or indirectly um, suffering from mental health issues, that 1% can, um, can take you all away. So that's what the MindMate is all about. If you um, have um, been around the MindMate um, for a while through social media or, or whatnot, you will know that um, we're all about trying to bring stories together because there's a lot to love about that. And the, the, the biggest thing that I get, which is obviously the most therapeutic for me, is that the more that I open up open honest discussion in the mental health world with people, with other people, the more I begin to see similarities with, with what I went through. So the MindMate works twofold. It, it, um, it helps to bring about a, uh, an environment and a community of people that love or are trying to love um, being who they are. And it's also very thera- therapeutic for me because it constantly reinforces this notion that we are we're all very alike in 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 very similar ways and um, and uh, the uh, the word anxiety is actually in retrospect this lovely emotion that actually does nothing but to help keep us safe and the physical symptoms and 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 perpetual cycles of fear are actually a lot less complicated uh, well can be a lot less complicated than. Uh, than what um, society currently views it, or at least in my opinion. So that's what the, the mental health podcast of The Mind Made is all about. So who is Tom Ahern? Well, that's me. I'm Tom Ahern. And uh, I'm basically someone that can get a bit stupid sometimes. I, uh, I like making stupid jokes. Um, I just think they're funny, even if I'm the only one laughing. Um, but I, I also like to, to speak very honestly, and sometimes that can... That can um, kick me in the butt, but other times it can be um, very powerful, I believe, if I'm just going to get around myself here a little bit. Um, and uh, I think that honesty, especially in this scope, is, is, is really important, important. And so I wanted to bring about a podcast that um, inspired other people to be honest um, with themselves and then with the community as well, because the more people we have going, hey, this is who I am and, and this is what I had and this is what I currently have and yada, 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 uh, then the more we're all going to understand that, let's be honest, we're all kind of mentally a little bit strange. <laughs> and that's totally what we want. There should be no norm. The norm should be all weird. And that's what I love about it, okay? So what is my journey or what did my journey look like? Well, my friends, I was always a, um, I was always an anxious kid. I was always someone that used to fidget a lot. I always had to be doing things. Um, I required a lot of mental stimulation for me to feel relaxed. And I was kind of ignorant in the sense that I thought that was normal. I thought that was normal. I thought everyone could just, you know, not really switch off. I thought everyone struggled to, uh, you know, to be just relaxed and happy, um, you know, unless they were doing something 24 seven or 29, 500 million. And I went through a lot of phases as a kid. I was, um, I wanted to be the, uh, the best Lego designer in the world, then I wanted to be the greatest magician in the world, then I wanted to be the uh, the best AFL player in the world. And, you know, you're probably thinking this is all pretty normal stuff. And to a certain degree, it definitely was. I think phases are just a very, very standard part of, of childhood. But the uh, the phases and I guess the perfectionism associated with that was when things didn't go my way, I used to get very anxious. And I didn't really understand what anxiety was as a kid. In fact, I've only really understood what it was in the in the past couple of years in, in finding my self-identity and finding who I am today. But uh, 
it really was this notion of ignorance is bliss. And uh, so I kind of just ran along my own little sort of anxious pathway there. And I was pursuing things and I was hanging around people. This is not to say that the people I was hanging around with were, were shockers, but I was, I was doing things that didn't really coincide with, with uh, happiness as a very subjective um, inner feeling, you know, of, of fulfillment. And I didn't know that. I had no level of self-awareness. I, I never practiced introspection. And I was doing things and saying things and behaving in certain ways that I thought society prized. So... I thought that making it to the AFL, um, which is, uh, for those listening outside of Australia, making it to the AFL um, to be the number one top dog in the game would get me all the girls, get me all the money, bring me all the fame, and I'd just be fucking kicking goals. And I I, I, I thought that's what it was. So I trained day in, day out. I, I Sometimes I'd train at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. on a Sunday night for, for a good couple of hours, go out running. I, was, I thought that, you know, kicking trying to kick goals in uh, in the middle of the night on a footy field would uh, help me with my with my with my eyesight on the footy field and things I remember actually thinking that and uh, you know that's all very well and good but if if things didn't go my way and I didn't kick the ball a certain way or I didn't feel extremely sore the next day I'd uh, I'd force myself to do things and that would give me a lot of a lot of anxiety and I uh, experienced a lot of panic attacks from it and this was on the start of my OCD so I look back on my life now as a 24 year old and I see how obsessive I became about things and obsession is a funny one it's often misguided um, today in uh, in in society and people think that obsessing about things and um, and having things neat and tidy in certain ways is is OCD or you've got OCD and uh, it's not necessarily the case, and OCD is a, is a bit of a struggle uh, sometimes, as I'm sure you uh, you know if you have experienced or you know someone with it. But um, my my training OCD uh, was a behavioural response to the anxiety I felt if things didn't happen or go my way when I was training. So this is what uh, OCD really is. This is to go off a little bit of a tangent in this uh, this very short podcast. Um, but basically, um, OCD is a, is a thing where you experience an anxious thought, and then in order to relieve that anxious thought or symptom, you have to carry out a, a specific behavior or go over something mentally in your mind over and over again, which actually just creates this perpetual spiraling and increases the strength of the obsession in the first place. So it's, uh, it's a very tough web to sort of untangle yourself from, and uh it takes a it takes a lot of time to, to get yourself out of it. And I like I, I I still get a lot of thoughts. I don't really get a lot of thoughts. That's probably um probably a lie. I still get thoughts every now and then um, about things that I used to obsess over and compulse over, uh, but they don't affect me in the same way I do. And that's that's with a few um, tools and tricks that I've uh, managed to um, to figure out and get a lot of help from um, lately. But anyway, I. Uh, I developed OCD in the the summer of 2013, which is the the fall or the winter, I should say, of those of our good mind make friends living up in the northern hemisphere. But uh, I developed OCD. I also had some significant anxiety from some volatile situations that were happening in my own personal life, and then I just I started getting panic attacks, and the panic attacks weren't fun. So panic attacks are uh, they're probably what uh, clinical psychologists recognise as the one to ten, the ten, the eight, nine, ten sort of level of uh, of uh, severe anxiety, and basically panic attacks are kind of evolution's best way to go. Dude, get the fuck out of this situation right now. So anxiety, anxiety is this beautiful uh, emotional mechanism that uh, that um, that um, maintains our survival as a as a primitive species. But as we all know now. We live in a modern society filled with abundance and we no longer live in an immediate return environment where we need to quickly get things in order to survive. Um, for everyone that has the Uber Eats app on their phone, I'm sure you can understand what I'm talking about here. One fucking button and you've got filthy fatty food uh, and Game of Thrones right on your bed, which is just the best thing in the world. But uh, we live in abundance and we no longer live in this immediate return environment and um, uh, anxiety is is the emotion of anxiety is kind of set up so that it kind of uh, forewarns us about potentially dangerous situations in order to keep us safe. So if you can picture yourself walking into a cave 
as a as a primitive young ancestral Neanderthal. So you're a cousin of a Homo sapien. Um, so you're a bit more of a brute. No offense, but um, you're walking into this cave and you you can start to get a little bit anxious. And you're like, oh fuck, like there could be a bear in here. And then the anxiety builds. The thoughts start to spiral. You get a little bit more physically anxious. You, you start sweating and. All these physical symptoms are preparing you to either fight that bear or to run for the hills. So you're left at this decision. And when you experience a panic a panic attack, this is kind of like this, this rational survival mechanism to go, all right, we're on here. I'm going to get all my adrenaline rock and I'm going to fight this motherfucker in the cave. It's my, it's my cave. Or you're going to go, I'm out of here. I'm going home to uh, old mate Neanderthal Stacy, who's my lovely Neanderthal wife. And uh, this is what anxiety does. So... If you can picture yourself in these scenarios, uh, irrational or or rational, we can come to that later, but uh, anxiety is basically this thing that keeps us alive. And um, we all experience it in different ways because we all have different upbringings, cultures, belief systems, demographics, um, all these sorts of things. But effectively, when we get anxious about something, something, rationally or irrationally, our our, our mind so the amygdala interprets any this this internal or external cue as as danger, and there are two fundamental different. Well, there's a, a fundamental difference about fear and danger, and that that is that danger is real and fear is not. So fear is this 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 foreboding of danger that may actually never happen. Okay, so I could approach the corner of a very very high building, and I could get more and more fearful and fearful and fearful. And that's probably rational fear because I'm going, shit, if I take one more step, I will be in danger of falling. And that's rational and that's when fear is important. And then you can have danger, which is literally uh, something that could potentially hurt you or end your life. And danger is very, very real and it's important that we all understand a tiger, an angry, hungry tiger on our bed when we see one. Uh, But uh, in this day and age, anxiety can get a little bit ridiculous and it can start to scare us when we, for example, speaking personally, um, have stupid, bizarre thoughts about schizophrenia, about going to hell and, and burning for all eternity, and about things like that. And these are some of the things that I developed. And what I must stress here is that the thoughts that, just speaking anecdotally, the thoughts that I had, had nothing to do with who I was as a person or what I was genuinely thinking. It was just a perpetuation of anxiety, which was brought about through specific internal and external circumstances that were changing in my life. So uh, I will eventually go into the specific thoughts and things and um, that I had. And um, if you've been following the mind map, you may know them or you may not know them. And we'll, we'll talk about this with a, uh, an amazing array of people that I've got lined up for this show. Um, and I, I can't wait to, uh, to bring them to you. But um, I guess the one thing that I wanted to, to talk about on, on this initial episode of the podcast was just a little bit, a little bit of a brief about what anxiety actually is, a little bit about who I am and what the mind mate stands for. And, um, and yeah, so that, that were my things. And it, it, uh, it, it took a couple of years to, to, to really go through a few barriers to figure out who I am, what I wanted to do in life, what made me happy, how my mind thinks. Um, and there was a lot of introspection, a lot of CBT, a lot of psych, uh, psychology appointments with, um, with uh, people who I can now call my friends, which is fantastic. But um, what I am so fascinated about is that all this was just my journey. And there are seven and a half billion other journeys out there. And they each have their own ups and downs. And what I learned, and we can touch back on that um, primitive understanding of, uh, of what anxiety is, that it doesn't matter about the thoughts, it amad- all that matters is the response to the thoughts. And already, just in the, the very, very short birth and time of the mind mate, I've, I've, I've grown so much as an individual through talking to people about their experiences. And there are so many people just in my very small community here in Melbourne that can completely and utterly relate to what I went through. And then that kind of makes me go, well, fuck, like what, what's going on overseas and like what's going on What's specifically going on in their mind? Why are we all able to relate to this stuff so much? And the fact of the matter is, we're all human and we all had one ancestor thousands of years ago that got scared and he just repopulated the world with with anxious people to to keep alive 
And it's, it's just, it's, it's really, really bizarre and interesting to me that ironically, anxiety presents this sort of feeling of isolation in the modern world when actually it's an emotion that we all have. And it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, ironic is literally the perfect word for it. So what I want to do, and I can use my, you know, brilliant past, you know, brilliant, that's probably the wrong word for it. Jeez, Tom, get around yourself here. But I can use my past um, to try to help people come to terms with, with who they are and, and talk open and, and honestly. And, um, and from that, create this environment and this society that actually goes, you know what? We are fucking all the same here. We're actually all the same. And let's just talk about it because we can build from that. And it doesn't need to be uh, a thing of isolation and embarrassment anymore. It can actually be a very, very empowering, empowering thing. And this is why I'm so excited about the, the, the MindMate podcast. And this is why I'm so excited about the MindMate in general. Um, so, so that's really what the MindMate is going to be about, guys. It's going to be about bringing people together and having a laugh, but also talking seriously about what mental health looks like for them, what it looks like clinically, what it looks like for me, um, you know, everything related to mental health. And I'm so pumped to, uh, to be beginning this journey. So that's, uh, that is essentially the first episode of the MindMate podcast, guys. And I would love to hear your thoughts, opinions, feedback, all that sort of stuff on it. You can DM me, Facebook me, um, you can poke me in the street or you can poke me over Facebook. Um, it's just at the mindmate or the mindmate.com. I will 100% uh, respond to you. And I genuinely hope you enjoy the intros and outros because I love Carl Sagan and I'm a fucking boring pseudo scientist nerd that loves to get around the pale blue dots. So please get around with me and I will speak to you soon. Bye. From this distant vantage point, the earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known.